Good morning, grandkids. Let's see what the monk is up to today. Let's see what he's going to be reading to us today. Or what he's going to be saying to us today. Hey, I made a big mistake deciding to retire up here with Greybeards. I'm going to read you a book today, but then I'm leaving this dreary place. Then I'll read to you from a new place, somewhere nicer. Maybe I'll buy me a home or just rent someplace. They don't ever do anything here but pray, which is all well and good, but enough is enough. I don't even think they hardly ever eat. I never see them go to a table and sit down for breakfast or lunch or dinner or anything. They don't even have a lot of snacks by their beds. They've got potions and all kinds of items to make potions out of, like you see here behind me on these shelves. A couple of times I think I've seen a piece of bread by one of the beds, but that's all. Anyway, I would even, they should even sit in there at that council table and eat, but they don't. Anyway, I'm tired of being here. I think it's boring. And my main complaint is, there's hardly any books around here. I mean, you would think that they would have lots of books piled up, accumulated over the years, but they don't. So besides the ones that I have accumulated and carried around myself, there's very few on a shelf anywhere. You'd think they'd have some by their beds, but they don't. Anyway, let's get on. Today, I'm going to read you The Wisp Mother. The Wisp Mother, Two Theories by Matthias Etwain. Among the folk tales from the northern reaches of Skyrim, few subjects are as popular as the Wisp Mother, ghostly women who lure unsuspecting travelers to their doom, steal children, and take vengeance on those who wronged them in life. Similar tales exist throughout Tamriel. The Malasane of Strosskai I never heard that before, sorry. Who lure ships to wreck on jagged shoals, then consume the souls of those aboard. The serpentine Shalas of Black Marsh, the Amaral of Valen, and some more. But unlike these mythic creatures, most scholars concede that Wisp Mothers actually exist. Though rare, credible reports of their sightings are simply too frequent to be ignored. Herein, a synopsis of what can be gleaned from provincial legends and the dominant theories on what they may actually be. The Wisp Mothers Most tales agree on only a few basic facts about Wisp Mothers. They are always female. They take the form of human, some say elven, spirits, wreathed in mist and decaying rags. They have an affinity for frost magic, rarely appearing in more temperate climes. But beyond that, the tales differ wildly. Some say they are ghosts waiting to be laid to rest. Others, that they are all that remains of the snow elves who once ruled Skyrim. Some say that they are native to all marsh or the north more generally, but other tales mention them in forgotten places 
on mountaintops as far away as the Jarls. Most reputable scholars dismiss these stories, preferring instead to focus on the few documented sightings from recent years. From these, two dominant theories have emerged. Based on his extensive research into necromancy and Cyrodiil's alien culture, Master Sadrin Serethi posits that Wismothers are a necrologic state, a type of lichdom developed by a now forgotten First Era culture. Under his theory, these are no mere ghosts, they are a cult of powerful sorceresses who achieved eternal life through undeath. Alternately, Ledet Belaine of the Synod contains that with smothers are not undead at all, but rather elemental manifestations arising out of Nern itself. By noting several similarities to Spriggans and Ice Wraiths, she contends that the Wisp Mothers are essentially elemental personifications of snow or mist, innately welding the power of their element instead of manipulating it through conventional sorcery. The Wisps. In most accounts, the victim is initially drawn to the Wisp Mother by glowing ghostly lights Although essentially passive, these creatures later attack in tandem with her, distracting the victim and draining their energy. Popular legend holds that these are the spirits of the Wisp Mother's previous victims. These spirits strengthen her, so anyone hoping to destroy her must first release the souls of those that she has killed. To scholars, this description immediately recalls the Will-o'-the-Wisp, a rare and dangerous swamp denizen of southern Tamriel. Oddly, Cyrodiilic legends invariably refer to wisps as lone predators. While these appear to exist in some sort of symbiotic relationship with others of their kind, Belaine argues that these wisps are a subspecies of true wisps scavengers that lure prey to the Wisp Mother and share in the psycho-ethereal <laughs> energy released by her kills. As codependent scavengers, they most likely lack the formidable defenses of the predatory cousins, rendering them far more vulnerable. Alternately, Sarethi posits that these wisps are merely emanations or conjurations of the Wisp Mother and not free living creatures. This is, this is supported by one incident in which an adventurer reportedly killed a Wisp Mother directly, only to observe the remaining wisps immediately perish as well, though the source is considered highly unreliable. In summary, scholarly opinion about Wisp Mothers and Wisps is sharply divided and is likely to remain so for some time. But all sources agree on one crucial point. These are highly dangerous foes and should be avoided at all costs. So there you have it. I'm going to be my last reading up here where the graybeards are, because this is a boring place. As soon as I find me some place to live, down off this mountain, I will be reading you some more books in the near future. So, bye-bye for now.